Tarponites, this is Gary here with another Tarpon Landings update. After the first one, uh, I called that one Tarpon Tough. I guess I'm going to go ahead and call this one Tarpon Tough 2.0. Uh, so my hat's off, or maybe my hat's on, and thanks to uh, Donna Lanigan who went out and had uh, several of these uh, nicely embroidered Tarpon Tough hats made. So this video is going to cover kind of the updates from Hurricane Ian up and th through, uh, let's say about November 3rd. So I've got a pretty comprehensive video. I'll do this one and then I'll release another one next week uh, that will be Tarpon Tough 3.0, which will focus strictly on the marina. But this video focuses mostly on tarpon landings, just a few things outside the community. So let's take a look. Pulling out of Tarpon, I wanted to show you this area cut and left on uh, Rose Garden. A week to 10 days ago, the street was totally picked up from the initial trash from the storm. But now you can tell that these houses went underwater. They're starting the reno. And with the reno comes all the sheetrock, the cabinets, still some more tree trimmings, see appliances, a little bit of everything that they're throwing out. So a week ago, this looked pretty good. <laughs> they had picked it all up. You see what we're facing now. It's gonna be a long time. For those of you who haven't come down yet, Cape Carl's full of these disaster relief trucks. Uh, they look like small trains. They've got uh, a truck uh, carrying a little cargo trailer behind it. Uh, they've got uh, a crane there that just goes down and lifts. This one's showing picking up a big stump and throw it in the front of the truck. But uh, Cape Carl is just full of these trucks going up and down the roads picking up uh, trash on both sides. This is one full block right off of Skyline. If you want to know where they're taking all these trees and stumps and limbs, They've got all these trucks that they're pulling in right here. They're stacking this stuff. It looks good 30, 40 feet high. And then they're uh, taking and they're grinding it up basically into uh, mulch. So it's a huge block. Down here we get to where you can see where it's been ground up into mulch. So the mulch price ought to be going down. Look at that. Isn't that huge, but these trucks are just pulling in right and left. These trucks are everywhere. You'll see four or five of them. It looks like uh, a train when they're together. I estimate we probably had uh, maybe a hundred trees that uh, fell down or were broken uh, during Hurricane Ian. I've got some uh, video here of. Uh, them going through, they're trying to uh, get the stumps up so they can have another truck come and pick, pick them up. But uh, they're doing this uh, throughout the community. It really looks a ton better once they, they get the uh, stumps removed. Once they get the uh, stumps and limbs up, they're taking them down near the uh, turnaround circle near the uh, heliport and they're storing them uh, there uh, temporarily. I guess they'll haul them all the way uh, later at one point. I took a couple of video clips on October 7th, about 10 days after Hurricane Ian, <clears throat> from one of the uh, penthouses. Here you can see our pool is <clears throat> still looks like uh, coffee. Uh, the trees, all the limbs are down. Panning out, you can see all the trucks out there as they're taking uh, boats out to uh, Sanibel to do some work. Here's a clip, uh, the other side, street side from the uh, penthouse. <clears throat> showing you a little bit over into uh, Tarpon Estates as well as into uh, Tarpon uh, Gardens. Uh, zero in a little bit more, you can see some of the homes here. Uh, like most pools in Cape Coral, uh, this home had its pool cage uh, totally uh, taken down. So a couple other homes over there. Joe France is lucky he didn't have a pool cage, so he's fine. Uh, the Maseas is home, etc. So looking straight down, you can see some of the refuse that's still along, uh, lined along the streets, but will be removed shortly. There were also a lot of uh, trees uh, down in the mangroves uh, here uh, between Building 3 and uh, Pinchers. Here you can see they're clearing those out as well. 
For those of you who are worried about how our iguanas fared, worry no more. They seem to be out in full force, uh, now enjoying uh, the sunshine, as well as going for a quick dip in the lake between uh, the gardens and the estates. Special shout out to all the volunteers who helped us uh, both before the storm and putting all the chairs and tables up as well as uh, after the storm getting them all back so we could open the pool. As well as uh, our uh, staff uh, working pressure washing, uh, got the pool up and looking pretty good in uh, just a couple of weeks. This is only 11 days after opening the pool. We had everyday landscaping come out. Uh, they trimmed all the trees, took all the debris away. So here's how it looked uh, before they started. Here's a little video clip of how it uh, looks uh, now. As you can see, they cleared all the uh, dead uh, branches out. Uh, it's very much open. I think you'll be surprised how quickly uh, these trees grew back. I know I was after Hurricane Ian from that. So a few before and after pictures. This is before. And this is the same angle basically after they had done the tree trimming. Again, this picture is before and the next picture is pretty much the same uh, afterwards at that particular point. Another one before and then afterwards. Uh, my wife and I could never see the pool from uh, 501 in Building 3 and now we've got that uh, shot uh, to look at it at night. Chris Hearn is back in that saddle, so to speak. Here he is in his uh, new office with the uh, Tarpon Landings logo and a beautiful picture of uh, the marina. Ed Clark, our president, has been at this post for like six weeks straight, leading the charge on the cleanup and the restoration here at Tarpon Landings. I took a few minutes and went back and tried to put together uh, somewhat of a timeline just of the highlights here. So Hurricane Ian arrived on September the 26th as a Category 4, almost a 5. 155 mile an hour winds, 18 foot surge out on Sanibel. I think it ended up being about 12 feet here. Uh, the very next day, my uh, Tarpon emergency response team started uh, going in and doing the da damage assessment, looking for uh, water intrusion, uh, as well as uh, checking out the ACs and a roof inspection. Uh, also, uh, starting on October 8th, we finally got the power back at Tarpon Landings. Again, we have some volunteer teams going back through, uh, turning on the AC units and all the units, as well as closing the refrigerators as we cleaned them out earlier. Uh, October 11th, uh, we had uh, engaged with NCRI, uh, which came in to do uh, the major uh, water restoration for us. October 18th, the pools finally reopened. October 19th, uh, finally we got Xfinity uh, cable internet, at least back to uh, most people, and that's actually uh, the day that uh, Chris Hearn uh, returned as well. This week, uh, the board also sent out a couple of emails, one on the uh, garage door repairs, the other one was on the uh, replacements. The uh, board's done an awesome job, and if you don't think uh, all of this was stressful enough, then uh, you've got to see what happens next. So pop goes the weasel, or in this case, uh, the pipe. Uh, the hurricane took down our signage, which gives you the uh, height clearance here. The truck drove in, as you see uh, the pipe up there that's now black. That's the one that was broken. Uh, the water did spill into uh, the P2 area. Wasn't too bad, but uh, they immediately paced the fans out, got the carpets out, and cleaned everything up. Lastly, don't forget the employee Christmas fund. Here's a reminder as well as the uh, mailing address. So if there's anything I can do for you here, whether it's uh, real estate related or anything related at all to Tarpon, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Give me a call, text, or shoot me an email. I'll be glad to help you out no matter what it is. Have a great day.